So this is the video on <coughs> installing and calibrating of the Dyer <coughs> Magnahelic gauge, the digital one. It's listed. Let's go through here. So I'll show you where we're at in this video. Um, first of all, you're going to have to know the signal type display listed in your calibration app. We're ordering one meter. This has a zero to 10 volt or a four to 20 milliamp output. So you'll have to look and see how it's supposed to be wired. I've included the coloring code. Notice this, the power is not polarity sensitive. It doesn't matter which way you hook these up. You have your output signal. That'll be going to the positive analog channel. One thing you need to pay attention of is the ground on the analog card needs to be connected to signal common too. This is the same common for the 0 to 10 volt output as well if you're using that. If this is a gas system, make sure that you have locked out the gas and shut it off. This would be the same gauge we'd use on static pressure measuring the inside of an air plenum on a unit or measuring gas pressure going into a, a furnace. Make sure you install the plugs. Now know the configuration before you begin because you have these ports here. They are connected from here to here and you have to plug one of them. Uh, you must use thread sealant. Even uh, earlier I was just testing this and I did not use thread sealant because uh, this is one that's going to be installed and I didn't know which one it was going on. But just because uh, I didn't use thread sealant, I could not get a good enough seal. I actually put my thumb over this entire thing and I had a leak and I could not run my uh, sensor all the way up to 50 inches of water column using my uh, pressure tester calibrator and my digital manometer gauge. First thing we're going to do, we're going to start this video at zero. We're going to calibrate the meter. You should have hooked this up and played with it before you go out there and try to do this on the line. So we have these available and you have your test bench. So we're going to hit the menu button, hit the up arrow. Now we're in the cow menu. We're going to hit the E for enter. I'm going to hit enter to zero this meter out. We're going to wait till it's done. And then I'm going to, that's all I got to do. But the serial numbers are stored in here too, so if you install this and don't want to forget what your serial number was to type in or whatever, uh, it's right there. It's stored inside the unit. Now, you can reset the default if things are acting a little um, screwy and start over because pretty much everything we use on this meter is default. The only thing we have to do from bringing it out of the box is zero. The span, now I could actually calibrate this using a uh, this meter. However, we are not going to do that. We're sending them off and having the company dyer calibrate them and send them back. But if I wanted to, I could go into the span function and then output a uh, zero inches water column, then turn on my um, dual port manometer tester and run it up to 50 inches of water column and hit the high end. And we could actually calibrate these on the line and not send them off, but that is not what we've decided to do. Uh, that might change in the future. If so, it's pretty easy to do from this menu. Uh, watching this video, I would simply just, if I was going to do that, I'm not really going to do it, but I would go in here and I would hit uh, span, which is zeroed now, which is fine. Uh, we'd hit enter. And, you know, if, if there's nothing on there, it's zero. That's fine. It didn't fail because I'm not sure that, but I believe the span, I'm sorry, the span is the high side. So I zeroed it and now I would need to run this up to 50 inches of water column. And if it was anywhere close to 50 inches of water column and I hit, hit that button, it would go ahead and recalibrate. But it fails because I don't have my pump on. But we're not going to do that because we want to keep the calibration settings that were done at the factory. So we're not going to do that on this unit. But that is how you would do it on the line if you if that is what they choose to do later on. I would run this one up to 50 and just hit that button on the high end after I zeroed and I would be done. So we're going to back out of this. And now we're back to our display. I'm going to power up 
our pressure manometer tester. Hold the button down until it comes on. All right. I'm going to hit the test button. Now, the instructions, if you read this, says to disconnect your pressure port because there's a, there's a calibration. So if we were to look right up here, it says to disconnect the pump pressure port while you let it settle in because it goes to the calibration routine. I'm going to tell you don't worry about that because we are not using this for calibration in this video. We are simply installed this meter and we want to verify that it actually is a functional meter and it works. So, and we don't have any plugs or anything and everything's plumbed right. So all we're doing is, is getting it close and verifying that it's reading close. Because the calibration, you've calibrated the, the PLC, the analog input earlier. We're not going to go through that procedure, but it's no different than calibrating any other 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 analog uh, signal into a PLC. There's numerous in instances in previous videos and documentation. Here we're going to run this up. So we're going to hit the test button. Here you'll see it's settling in. Technically you're not even supposed to bother looking at that until it, it, it goes and displays inches of water column. Okay, so that's just kind of where it landed. Uh, you'll have to wait for some to to stabilize because when you run this up you can actually hear the little pump increase in speed. It's a little PWM vacuum pump, very small. So we're going to hold this and we can just hold it down and that puts us into high speed. And we're going to run this all the way up. And once I get close to 50 inches of water column, which is the max range of this meter, then I'll start sneaking up on it. And we can verify that it is actually. You'll notice some alarm lights and stuff are coming on. Oh, went too high. Bring it back down. Uh, we're not using any of these alarm functions on the line that I'm aware of. We're simply recording these values through pinpoint, so we don't use alarm high or set point one. Whatever you see there is just the default that was programmed, and ignore it. If you see any of these indicators, the only thing we care about is the things lit up. We don't care about set points or alarms. Uh, if we do any alarming, that will be done in the PLC, not in the instrument. And let's get that thing back down. Now, once you get close, you can just start tapping it one at a time and just wait a second for it to settle in because it will get there. It'll at least get within 0.1. We're going to keep going down a little bit. Getting close. I mean, if. Oh, oh. And we may not get precise, but let's see where we settled out. Well, that's pretty close right there. That's kind of hovering. So, in this instance here, if we were to look here, you would see that. I am actually simulating 50 inches of water column. My meter is reading anywhere between 50.1 and 50.2, which is well within the tolerance of this sensor. And my range is 20. I know that's kind of cut off a little bit. Let's see if we can get my hand over. There you go. Now maybe you can see it. 20.134 milliamps. So, if we look at our calibration sheet that we had, we can see that in actuality, if we look on our data point checklist, we'll see that 20.066 was the high end, and that equaled 50.166 inches of water column is what the device said reference reading what their instrument said on the far left was 50.001 inches inches of water column so we're going to go with you know like i said we're we're not really so much worried about precision we're not going to fudge this we just want to make sure it's close one inch is a water column somewhere five percent ten percent this one is well within spec so we're going to call this calibration done